Hey folks, it's JR, back for another episode of Echoes of Shannon Street Case File. It's going to be episode 32, Is Your Arm Okay? We're going to continue along the negotiations till we get caught up time-wise with the radio transmissions. Don't forget to click on the link in the description below so you can check out the podcast. You want to get a copy of the book, the documentary, go over to my Facebook page, my website, all that stuff's in there. We're going to listen to a clip from Lieutenant Shotwell, Stanley Shotwell. He was one of the negotiators at uh, Shannon Street. He was also my lieutenant down south. You probably heard me tell that story in a previous episode. But anyway, he's good, a good supervisor, and I really thank the world of uh, Lieutenant Shotwell. Anyways, folks, we're going to listen to that. We're going to listen to some more negotiations, and they will continue to be very frustrating, or at least they have been for me. Appreciate you tuning in, and let's get on with Lieutenant Shotwell. This this wasn't particularly a, a racial problem, but it was, in a sense, because at that time, officers, they felt like they had the upper hand, and they didn't have to talk to you like you were a male. They didn't have to talk to you like you were decent. They tended to talk to you like you were just a poor, just poor garbage, you know. That was a mistake on our part as officers. You had to treat these folks like they were decent people. Tape number six, side number one, page number two, and the date is still January the 12th, 1983. Let's talk about this thing over. Okay, let's resolve it. We can do it together, but you have to talk to me. Come on, Lindbergh, and talk to me. Couldn't quite hear what you said, Lindbergh. Talk a little louder. Lindbergh, you haven't told me what you wanted. Why don't you send one of the people outside telling me what you want? That is not too difficult to ask, is it? You trust your friends, don't you? Let them come outside and be your spokesperson. Let them tell us what you want. Surely you trust one of them. I couldn't quite hear you, Lindbergh. Come closer to the window on this side over here. What did you say? You will have to speak up, Lindbergh. I can't hear you. Come closer to the window so I can hear you better, okay? I still can't hear you, Lindbergh. Look, if you don't want to come over to this side window send one of your friends over to the side window and tell us what you want okay that is not asking too much is it Lindbergh come on talk to me you talked to me a few minutes ago see there's no harm there we talked man to man but you have to talk a little louder come on Lindbergh you are a reasonable person talk to me Lindbergh come on talk to me There's no harm in talking. We are talking man to man. I know you're a man. I know you're a responsible person. We can reason with one another, but you have to talk to me, Lindbergh. Come on, talk to me. Lindbergh. Come on, Lindbergh, talk to me. Come on, we can work this thing out together. We can work it out with your friends. Lindbergh, if you don't want to talk to me, send one of your friends outside. Let them tell us what you want. Surely you trust them. Lindbergh, come on, talk to me. Come on over by the side window and talk to me. Come on. If you don't want to talk to me through the window, put the phone receiver back on and we can talk to you by telephone. It would be a lot easier than yelling into the bullhorn here. That is not an unreasonable request, is it? Come on, Lindbergh. Put the telephone back down on the receiver. Let's talk. Let's talk man to man. Let's work this thing out. Look, as I told you before, 
What has happened in the last several hours is not as bad as what you think it is. You should tell your friends inside that too. I know they're concerned, but we can work this thing out together and we can work it out with them too. It is not as bad as it sounds. But you have to talk to me, so come on, put the telephone back down on the receiver and let's talk by the phone, okay? It would be a lot better than using this thing. Come on, Lindbergh. Listen to what your friends are saying inside. Come on, talk to me. Send your son outside. Let him talk to us. Surely you trust your son. I know he trusts you as a father. He could be your spokesperson. Send Squeaky outside or send Daryl. Send whoever you would like outside. Send someone outside that needs medical attention. Look, I know you are a good man and you are a good human being. And if someone has a medical problem in there, you will send them outside because I know you want them to be taken care of, right? Your friends would trust you to do that, wouldn't they? Lindbergh, do you need some medical attention? I can get it for you. What do you need? Talk to me. Is your arm okay? Lindbergh, are you sure you don't need something for that arm of yours? Come on, Lindbergh, talk to me. Come on, Lindbergh, be reasonable. If you don't want to talk to me, let one of your friends talk to me. Surely you trust them. I can't quite hear you, Lindbergh. You'll have to speak up. Lindbergh, come on, talk to me. Lindbergh, come talk to me. Tape number six, I'd number one, page three. Lindbergh, Lindbergh, let one of your friends talk to me. I could talk to them man to man. I thought I could talk to you man to man. I know we can do that. Come on, Lindbergh. Let's work this thing out together. You're supposed to be a reasonable person. And I know you are... Everyone tells us that, but you have to talk to me. Come on, Lindbergh. Come on over to this side of the house and talk to me. Come on, Lindbergh. Come on over to this side of the house and talk to me. Come on, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, let one of your friends come over and talk to us. Have them come over to the window. Let us know what you want. We don't even know that yet. Is that too much to ask? Look, why don't you go ahead and put the telephone back down on the receiver and let's talk over the telephone, all right? We talked before. You see, there's no harm in that. That was a reasonable request, wasn't it? We tried to understand one another. We need to trust one another. We can work this thing out together, but you have to talk to me. Look, I know you are getting tired of this, and I know you are hungry, and I know you are cold in there, and we are tired, we want to go home, and the relatives of your friends in there and your relatives want them to go home. And they are concerned about you, and they are concerned about them. We are here to help you. We want to make sure everyone is okay before we go home. So look, why don't you send them outside? That is reasonable. That is being a good friend. This is being a trusting friend, and that is looking after your group. You are looking after the best interests of your group. Captain Lewis said to stay away from the leadership stuff for a little while. Come on, Lindbergh, talk to me. Lindbergh, come on. Come closer to the window and talk to me. I'm here to help you. I am here. I am not here to harm you. We can work this out together, but you have to talk to me. Send one of your friends over to this side of the window. Let one of your friends talk. Let them talk to us. That way we'll know, we'll show you we're not going to harm you. So go ahead and send one of your friends over here by the side window. There's no harm in that. Surely you trust one of your friends in there. If you need medical attention, we will get you medical assistance. If your friend needs it, we'll get it for them. I know you're concerned about the welfare. We are concerned about it too. We can help you and we can help your friend, but you have to talk to us, Lindbergh. 
Let's be reasonable about this. I told you before that what has happened is not as bad as you think it is. Come on, Lindbergh, talk to me, Lindbergh. Come on, let one of your friends talk to me. Why don't you send one of your friends out so we can understand what you want? We don't know what you want. We are confused. You have to talk to us. Come on, Lindbergh, put the telephone back down on the receiver and talk to us. Come on, Lindbergh, you are a reasonable person. That is a reasonable request. If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your friends. Their relatives are concerned about them. Tape number six, side number two, page one. We can work this problem out. We can do it. You can do it. Your friends can do it. But you have to talk to me, Lindbergh. Come on, Lindbergh. Put the full of telephone back down on the receiver. Talk to us. Let us call you. Come on, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, come on. Send one of your friends over to the side window and let me talk to them. That is not an unreasonable request. Come on. Maybe they can explain a little better what you want. Did you ever consider that? Let them be the spokesperson for you. Come on, Lindbergh. You are a reasonable person. Come on, Lindbergh. Let's work this thing out together. Let's talk man to man. Surely you can do that in front of your friends in there. I know you are the spokesperson, but come on, let's talk about it. Put the telephone back on the hook. Let's talk by telephone, okay? If you don't want to talk by telephone, why don't you send one of your friends outside? Let them explain to us what you want. I think that is a very reasonable request. Let them be one of your spokespeople. Let them tell us what you want. Come on, Lindbergh, you're a reasonable person. Lindbergh, come on. I know you can hear me in there. At least let's talk a little bit. Lindbergh, come on. Come on, talk among ourselves for a while. Let one of them be your spokesperson. Let them come over to the side window. Then let them tell us what you want. That is not too hard to ask. I'm sure any one of your friends in there are going to be more than willing to do that. So why don't you let them do it? Come on, Lindbergh. We can work this out man to man. Come on, Lindbergh. Information. We are getting just slight movement in the house every now and then. All right. We just heard a door slam in there. Come on, Lindbergh. Send one of your friends in there outside. Let's work this thing out together. Come on, Lindbergh. Look, I know you're hungry in there. I know you're tired. I know your friends in there are hungry and tired. I know that you want to take care of them in there. So why don't you send them outside if they want to come out? Surely you trust your friends. You have to trust us. If they need some medical assistance, we can get them medical assistance. But let them come outside. Whatever they need, we can get for them. That is not unreasonable. I know as a church spiritual person, you would do that for them. You are a good human being. You know that, and they know that. So if there is anyone who needs medical assistance, then why don't you send them outside now? That is not an unreasonable request. And you know that, and I know that. You will build a lot more respect among your friends if you can do that. Now, come on, Lindbergh. Let's be reasonable. Come on, Lindbergh. Come on, Lindbergh. Talk to me. Let's talk man to man about this. Look, we have been talking for a long time, since about 9 o'clock last night. Let's work this thing out together. We are here to help you. We are not here to harm you. We are here to help your friends, too. We can work it out, but you have to talk to us, Lindbergh. You have to talk to us what the problem is. Why don't you put the telephone receiver back down on the hook so we can talk to you by telephone? Come on, Lindbergh. Look, if you don't want to talk to us by telephone, why don't you send one of your friends outside the house so that they can explain to us what you want? That, I think, is a very reasonable request, don't you? Go ahead. 
Ask your friends. I am sure they agree with that. And if you or one of your friends needs medical assistance, why don't you send them outside? Isn't that what true friends are all about? Think about it. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this episode. As to be expected, negotiations, incredibly frustrating. I would think after a while, I'd get tired of hearing your own voice. I'm sure they were. You know, a little side story, but uh, some of the negotiators, one in particular that I worked for, he told me that uh, a lot of policemen ostracized the negotiators, somehow blaming them for what went on. And that's just not correct. That's not accurate. The negotiators just following orders. They. I know at least one in particular told me that there never were really any negotiations, but they didn't have any choice. <laughs> they were told just to keep talking until the people in charge decided it was time to let the attack unit go in, regardless of Officer Hester's life. No, but enough of that depressing stuff. Folks, I do appreciate it. We'll be back in a few days probably do one more episode of negotiations and we'll should be back on track I believe folks I do appreciate you and as always I'll see you down the road <laughs>